Let's jump into it. The Daily Mail has this exclusive. Trump was victim of child abuse at hands of his father, who caused him terror that would scar him for life, claims President's niece, who describes Donald as Frankenstein's monster in explosive memoir. Now, I'm not one to normally jump to these kinds of sensationalist headlines. I'm going to the Daily Mail because they have the best bullet point format in their story for me to get through the gossip quickly here. But this is a little more than gossip. It's not an exclusive for the Daily Mail. Um, I don't know. Maybe they were the first to publish this online. But this is the book that has leaked out to uh, a number of different sources and has been already released to the New York Times and a, a number of other major media outlets after the Trump family. And they had Trump's brother do this. Remember, we brought you this story last week where they were trying to suppress this book legally and say that it, it, it cannot come out. So we're going to at least cover the bullet points, see if we can come up with some interesting implications here. I'm covering this story more for the implications of it socially and in Trump's reputation and politically because I, I mean, Trump is a monster. Oh, he was the product of abuse. Shocking. Real, really? Don't, like, did, did, did you, like anybody who knows anything about human psychology, about how wealth affects people, uh, about you know, the world's dynasty families, you go, oh yeah, of course Trump is the product of a sick and twisted world and a, a really messed up family life. But here we have it in black and white. It's like Trump is, is, is having his pants pulled down in front of the entire country uh, against his will. Because, I don't know, if, if he was well hung, he would probably just let it happen. But he's not. He's got a very embarrassing past. Surprise, surprise. And for people who don't know, for people who aren't informed enough to not be surprised by this, the shock is actually going to be quite significant. So here are the bullet points from the Daily Mail. Donald Trump suffered child abuse at the hands of his father, Fred Trump Sr., the president's niece, Mary Trump, will claim in her explosive memoir. It has claimed. It's there. It's in black and white. It's already there. The book claims Fred Sr. caused Donald terror and he suffered, suffered deprivations that would scar him for life. Now, who is this coming from? Now, you, you, she puts a Ph.D., on the cover of her book. The 55-year-old psychologist also describes Donald as Frankenstein's monster and Fred Sr. as Dr. Frankenstein. Now that's a little bit you know, dramatizing of the language, but it is coming from a credible source and backed up with actual data or stories in this case. And of course, a lot of documents to back this up including a lot of never-before-seen legal documents. Mary writes that she believes her uncle is not only a narcissist, but meets the criteria for antisocial personality disorder, which in its most severe form is generally considered sociopathy. She claims Donald paid a friend to take his SATs for him in order to attend the University of Pennsylvania for its famous Wharton School of Business. Mary claims her uncle ogled her at age 29 while she was in a, a bathing suit at Mar-a-Lago with Donald declaring, holy S blank blank T, Mary, you're stacked. Mary reveals Donald's eldest sister, Mary Ann, scoffed at his presidential run, calling him a clown and poked at his five bankruptcies. The name of the book is Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. And I think because of all of this legal wrangling, it says now being released two weeks early on July 14. You can pre-order this online, although I'm sure you can find a free version of it if you really want to keep your money out of the family. The memoir is the subject of a legal dispute between Mary and the Trump family. And CJ, if you would scroll down in this article, there's some 
some interesting photos and, and a lot more detail to this that we're, we're just, we're, we're not going to get into today because this is a lot of, you know, it's, it's a lot of gossip. It's a lot of dirt. It's a lot of, uh, you know, very weak political conversation that, that's going to come out of this. You know, what's the point? Why, why am I even covering this at all? I mean, part of it is this, is this is the big story of the day. It's kind of avoidable, unavoidable to, to you know, not, to, to not talk about this. <clears throat> so it's Ertz. <laughs> the story itself is unavoidable at this point. This is what everybody's talking about right now. And people want the juicy gossip on the president finally laid bare. And, you know, the, 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 the system that we live under today, it doesn't really care about the reputations of its temporary front man, right? Or front men. They, they, they really don't care. They, they throw Donald under the bus. They're not going to stop this from happening. They're not going to go to extreme lengths. I mean, it would backfire in the long run, right? I mean, if they really tried to bury this story. How dare you embarrass our Cheeto Jesus, our Orange Julius, who shall not be questioned because he is the supreme leader of America, right? If, if they went that way with it, it would give the system less credibility. Now, just to step way back, when you look at different systems of government, they're all kind of illusions. I bear with me for a second here, right? Because we went from, you know, at monarchies to parliamentary monarchies to republics, democracies, various decentralized forms of government. But somehow <clears throat> power really hasn't been democratized as much as these system changes would suggest, has it? No, it hasn't. There's always been an elite, a super class, an oligarchy, if you will. Really, even with a monarchy, you say, well, the monarch is in charge. The singular monarch rules. It. Well, not really. Right? The monarch has a council of advisors, behind the scenes power players in any given country that control the real power in the banking system, right? There have always been groups behind the throne, power behind the power. And in the United States, it was the president and behind, look, look, behind the president is the Congress the Senate and the House of Representatives. And there's no secret counsel behind him. Well, he's got his cabinet. And we go, really? So the illusion is just that much better now in America. The people have demanded a better illusion compared to that of kings and parliaments. We must have a president and a Congress. And we must be able to change our president, right? Well... I think it was Lysander Spooner who said, a man is no less a slave because he gets to choose a new master every four years. But really, the new master is the illusion. Because the real masters are the, one who pull, masters are the ones who pull the strings from behind the scenes. And so... What we see with this is, is sort of a reinforcement of the illusion of the system, that the figurehead is what matters, that the, the personality of the person making these judgment calls for society is what counts. And sadly, it does more than it should because of our current system, because we give this arbitrary authority to people in power. Well, what, really, we don't need a president. We don't need this centralized system at all to begin with. So I, I hope that out of, out of covering this story, you know, not only do we see, a, you know, a failure of confidence in the system, and it's, you know, one more president by reputation falls after another, eventually people might just say, all right, let's, let's question the system as a whole. So there is that good news, but it's not going to happen from reading this book. None of your important conclusions about government will change unless 
you were already laboring under the delusion that who sits on the throne actually matters. What matters is that the throne shouldn't be there in the first place.